Hey guys, this is Eric Wanganer with Wanganer Racing. Today's video is about angle milling, but before I talk about any of that stuff, I want to talk about my shirt orders. If you would like to place an order for a Weingartner Racing shirt, email me at weingartnerracing at gmail.com and tell me your shirt size and whether you want it in gray or white. They cost 30 bucks. Uh, please get it in by December 10th because that's when the cutoff is going to be. All right, let's get to today's topic. Today's video is about angle milling of the heads and how that affects flow and a bunch of other stuff about it. Um, the beginning of this video is describing what actual angle milling is. So if you're already familiar with that, you can fast forward a little bit and you get to me actually showing you what the head looks like when it's all angle milled. And then I'm going to show you the flow numbers for the head um, that's been angle milled. And you'll get to see it float on four different ports. So it's not just one. And all four ports are different because this is from the Internet Ports Heads head, the LS3 one. This is a stock one. And each port's different, so you can see how that affects. I also floated on two different bore sizes, a 4030 and a 4155. Okay, so let's go and get started about what actual angle milling is and why we do it. So the gist of it's like this. Um, this is a small block Chevy head. I'm going to use it here. This is LS3 head, but you, you'll understand why I have them here for demonstration purposes. Typically, most people, what we do when we uh, mill, we take off, we level the head perfectly flat, and we bring the cutter across here perfectly flat, and it takes off the same amount all the way across this head. And there's a couple reasons why we mill. One's to get the, da the gasket surface nice and smooth so it seals up. But for some times, what we want to do is we want to reduce the chamber volume. And the way we can do that is we can mill the head, and that will reduce chamber volume. But there are limits to flat milling. One of the things is, if you flat mill, let's say you take off 30 thousandths, you're losing 30 thousandths in piston to valve clearance, guaranteed. Exhaust will lose 30 and so will the intake. But there's other things that happen as well. When you mill too much, and especially on an aluminum head, aluminum heads have steel seats in them, or steel alloy of some sort. And what can happen is if you mill too much off, there won't be enough aluminum here, which my camera can't focus in, and the cutter will drag across, which you will see in this video, um, and it leaves the, the surface rougher. So not ideal. The other thing on a small block Chevy head, this isn't so much an LS head, and I'll tell you why, is if you flat mill too much, this is our intake opening. If you flat mill too much on a small block Chevy head, what happens is this distance right here gets pretty thin. And I've seen some heads that come in that are really, really thin in this area. And the problem with that is the gasket has a hard time staying attached and it gets sucked in. And then for those of the small block Chevy world know, it will suck in oil and it's not a good thing. So you gotta keep a little bit of distance here to get some clamping force for the gasket. So that's, that's what flat milling is. So to get around that, if we wanna reduce the chambers even more, um, what we do is we angle mill. And what you're essentially doing is instead of leveling this, having this perfectly flat in the mill, you actually tilt this side up more so that the mill cuts more on the chamber size side than this side and what you will do is it will take off more here and less here so it can make the chambers reduce in size even more however it opens up a whole bunch of problems so let's go over here and i'll kind of show you so here we have a block and we have it we're going to call this the intake because so i should have wrote that okay and here's our head and this is the chamber now so, it, angle milling has two really effects. One, if we angle mill right, we're going to reduce the chamber size so our compression ratio comes up. But the other thing is we're going to make the valve tilt. If we angle mill, you're going to roll that valve over. So that's why sometimes they say it's rolling the valve over when you angle mill. I'll go ahead and tell you, if you think you could take a, say, 23-degree valve angle head and reduce it to like 11 or 12, it ain't going to happen. Just to give you an idea, this head was angle mill, not this one, but we're going to get ready to see it. This one's 15 degrees. I angle milled 330 thousandths, which is an absurd amount. It went from 15 to 12 degrees. Typically, heavily angle milled heads, like you take off 120 is most I've ever taken off, one degree. It's not gonna be a huge change. So, but here's what happens. So everything's sitting here. The, the, this is the deck surface of the head. It's sitting on the block. The intake's sitting on the block. If we angle mill, what I'm gonna do is I make it like this. Um, uh, my fingers can't get underneath. We make it kind of sitting like this. So now the block's straight, but the head's tilted up because I've cut more away from that side. So I've rolled it like that. 
Now, if you notice, we now have a problem. If the intake was still sitting like it should be, the block was still squared, you've got a gap. Because I rolled the head this way, I create a gap there. And using the intake stop by the V femoration in the block. And this creates a mismatch where you'd have a leak. So what do you do? On a head, typically what they'll do is we'll cut, recut the intake face on the head to make it true up with the intake. Well, if you remove material from the head, the intake itself will sit lower on it because it's sitting in the V. And if I move more out, the intake will sit lower. So sometimes, even though we've corrected the angle, you'll have to add a thicker gasket to make up for that. That's one disadvantage. The second one is this. Besides having to do this side of the head, the head bolts have to be refaced. Because if I roll the head over and I cut it like this, all the spots where the bolt holes are sitting are now tilted this way. They're no longer going to be square with the top of the head bolt or um, nut. So we have to spot face each one of these. And in extreme cases, those holes also have to be elongated because we've rolled the hood over and the stud won't even go through. So that's a pretty big deal. Because of this, it's a multi-step function to do angle milling. You have to mill this side, this side, spot face the bolt holes, and sometimes ring them out the inside. Because of this, it's way more expensive to do. So for instance, I charge 110 to flat mill has a pair of heads. I don't even angle mill. Um, I have some other shop I'll send them to if I have to get an angle milled. However, Brodix is really nice about this. Um, they charge you for it. On well, my Dragon Slayers will order, if you want a 58cc chamber, what they'll do is, since they cast their own heads and machine their own heads, what they'll do is they'll angle mill them first before they ever put the seats or holes or anything else in. So you can have them cut to a 58cc chamber, then they'll cut where the seats go, put them in the right height, then cut all the bolt holes and everything else and the intake face so it's all exactly like it should be without having to cut extra. Now they do charge a bit more for this. So I think it's like 350 bucks. So yeah, it costs more, but you can get your chambers down. Now, hearing all this, you're like, why would I need to do it with the LS? To this day, not one single LS guy has ever asked me to do it. And the reason why is on small block Chevys, we've got a 23 degree valve angle that sits something like this. Because of this, our chambers are usually bigger. So a lot of the classes on, um, we're trying to get the compression ratio up, they would try to reduce the chamber or you could add more dome. If you reduce the chamber, it's usually more efficient because it's easier for a flame to travel over a flat top as opposed to a dome piston. So if I can make the chamber smaller, it's better. However, as times have progressed, more people have gone to turbos and they don't need the super high compression ratio, hence the LSs. Now the LSs actually have pretty big chambers. So 23 degree valve, cha valve angle heads typically have to have big chambers because of their valve angle. These are 15 degree and they should be smaller. For instance, if you got a 15 degree head for a small lock Chevy, usually in the 50 cc range for chambers. Matter of fact, my Dash 13 Brodix which is a 13 degree small block Chevy head, has a 47 cc chamber. They have LS7s, which are like 68 cc's, and they're 12 degree. Their chambers are bigger because of course they were trying to get the compression ratio down on their factory LS engine. If they did them like normal, they'd be sky high and almost have to run a dish. Anyway, it's not a big deal though because LS guys typically run turbos. Turbos are becoming more of the way, the same with pro chargers. And due to that, they don't need small chambers and efficient chambers because that stuff's great for NA, but let's face it, most people aren't running NA anymore. They're doing some kind of power adder. And because of that, they're usually using less compression ratio and something that's a slower burn chamber. So they would rather have a bigger chamber, hence LS3. So this day, no one's ever asked me to do one on LS3, and I don't think they ever will. Not to mention, you don't have the problem with the LS3 that you do on the small block as far as milling goes. I can mill, I mean, look at this. See how much distance we have? Because it's a raised runner. You'd have to mill quite a bit off flat wise just to even get close to that. Also, look how far the seat is from the deck because of the lesser valve angle. So you can mill flat mill quite a bit off. Matter of fact, there was a customer I did 83 thousandths off on an LS3 and plenty of room everywhere. If I did that in the small block, hitting the seats, guaranteed. So anyway, there's that. Now, the next part you're gonna see, and I know this is kind of a longer introduction, but I wanted to go over that. I'm gonna show you this stuff, the process of going through the actual milling of the head. Then we'll get to flow numbers, 
and some other stuff. And also, if you stayed around to the end, you'll get to see me try side milling, which is this. It's dumb, I'm gonna say it, you would never really do it. I didn't only try to mill this side off more, I tried milling more off this side of the head compared to this side to make the head tilt this way so the valve opens with an angle away from the bore to see if it helped flow. Alrighty, here's the next part to explain a little bit more or show you more. 50 thousandths. All right, this is 100 thousandths angle milled, still not even close as you could tell. See the line? But start watching this part start going away. Here we go for another 50 thousandths. 150 thousandths. This is 200 thousandths. See how much is angled on the side? All right, keep going. Okay, hopefully you've gotten the idea by now. Essentially what it's doing is it takes more from this side than it does this side. And even now, it's this is as far as I went. In case you're wondering, this is 330 thousandths. You would never do this on a real uh, one. If this was actually gonna be on an, a car, I would never have done it. Um, or an engine that would be running. This is more like just to see what would happen. And I told before in the previous videos, I didn't wanna do it halfway, I wanted to go whole hog. And that's what I've done. And you could see how much is taken off. I mean, if you kind of look at the head here, you could see this. But to give you an idea how much has been taken away, you see this? That's the head bolt or the accessory bolt hole. All that. So it's quite a bit, more than anything ever. And just to give you an idea, this is the stock one. Okay, stock Flotec LS3. Can we do this for a customer? Really just putting them together. But anyway, that's this one. I mean, and if you look at this side, compare it to this side, very little remains. So quite a bit off. And if you, what happens is when you mill that much off, it sometimes it can change the angle. Now at 330 thousandths, how much angle do you think changed? I'm giving you stuff to think and giving an answer to yourselves because I'm just going to tell you. They start off at 15. It's now 12. Did I know it was going to land at 12? No, it just happened to be that way. I checked before and after 12 degrees. That's what it came to. So it lost three degrees from taking off 330 thousandths. You would never take off that much. In other words, if you really want to roll up the head, you'd have to do something totally different. And it'd be very difficult to do. So anyway, um, there's that. I'm getting ready to flow them. And I'm going to flow them just like I did before in the last video. I got four ports here. And there's a reason why each one was different. This was the 55 degree port, um, the highest flowing one. Uh, this one will be curious to see what it does. This one was the burr finish and it's just a stock port. The reason why I left it burr finish was because I wanted to see how th this angle milling would affect it. If it's going to change with the burr finish or not, because I might smooth this up and do another video about burr versus um, 40 grit. This one was the smallest port we had. Um, definitely the highest velocity. So I'm wondering what is this going to do? And this was the probably, it's not bad for flow wise, but I hate the port design. This is a 50 degree seat. Anyway, we're going to flow them all and see what happens. Um, and I'll, I have numbers before, so we have numbers after, both on the 4030 bore and 4155. Speaking of which, here's my 4030 plate. Give me a second to grab it and put it up there. Yep, it goes this way, just so you can kind of see. This is the plate you buy for a flow bench, so you can flow it on it. And I probably didn't sit on there right. Oh. This is very hard to do with one hand. <laughs> There we go. This is a 4030 bore. Now I know LS's or the six liters are 4065. I don't have that. You can still tell it's gonna nail right there. This whole side here, just not as much. If you notice from my other video, because this got cut back, this part here, it's not being as shrouded from this point forward. So it may help flow, may. It's still hitting it there. If you're hoping that by angle milling it would have shrank it down, it didn't because if you notice, it comes up here and then it's pretty much straight up to, through there. So cutting more off just keeps it the same really distance. If it was more like an angle like this, cutting off more, of course, would have shrank it down. It just didn't. But anyway, I'm going to flow it and see. See what happens. 4155, sorry, 4030 bore and a 4155 bore. Same test we did before, just been angle milled. 
Let's see what it does. Okay, now I've side milled the head. I'm gonna show you this because it ain't gonna probably make a whole lot of sense to some people. First off, let me say you can never do this on, an, on a head that'd be running on an engine, at least on this type. Essentially what's been done is I ground more from this side than this side, and you can see how there's still some left. The gas is gonna seal this up. Not that it really matters. This is never going on a live engine. Um, essentially, I took the head and I tilted it like this so I could cut more off from this side. What that will do is it's gonna roll the valve into away from the chamber. So when the valve opens, it's opening away from the cylinder itself. So hopefully that will gain some airflow. However, if you're looking at the head, you might see why this may not be may not work. And the reason why is because the head's been milled so much. Let me explain. Do you see these lines on the mill? In case you're wondering what they are. It's not that the mill's messing up. What it's doing is it's clipping the seat and that material is getting scrubbed around. And that's what causes these scuff marks. And I say so. Well, this is the stock port. The valve job is right here, and then there's supposed to be a top cut, as you can see. It ends because it's been cut off by the milling. It doesn't seem like that big a deal, but that actually usually hurts low lift flow, and I'm thinking that with the cane, it's supposed to help. So whatever this might have gained, this is lost. Now, the one that's least affected, of course, is this side because less material is moved from this side. So the sad part, though, is this is the worst. This is the, my least favorite port. And it's probably going to show the most gain because pretty much its valve jobs not not been removed as much the highest flowing one which is this one it's got a little bit of top cut left as you can see barely uh this is my favorite one my smallest port it's mostly gone too so what i may end up doing is flowing it like it is put the valve job in to drop it back down to get some of my top cut in and then reflow it I thought I would be done with this head. Guess not. As you can tell, these chambers are tiny and you can never do this on the thing. Uh, notice how much of the deck is left. So just to give you an idea, and that's the accessory bolt hole. So I've milled the crap out of it. How much? See this, this is all aluminum. This is just from this head. This much has been removed from one head. It's insane. That's all from this, because I cleaned it before. So yeah, I'm gonna, I've already flowed it with an angle mill. I'm gonna flow it like this and then I'm probably gonna end the video. And then what I'll end up doing is probably redoing the valve job and sinking them in just to see if it picks up any flow. And then I'm going to ruin this one by putting the throat too large. And then I'm just gonna auction the head. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have angle milled so much so I'd have more room for this. But who knows, this thing may just be like amazing and be like, ah, good enough, done. I guess you'll see in just a second. All right, guys, here's what I did. I floated it without doing, redoing the valve job, and I was pretty disappointed because I knew it lost flow because the top cut right here was gone um, because of the side mill. So what I did is I went ahead and redid the valve job. So this is the 55 degree port, supposed to be the highest flowing one right here. It's redid. Um, I'm gonna have to blend the throat again and the chamber. This is the burr finish one, which has more of a stock valve job. I've got to take it out too. Um, it lost probably the most. That's why you see this big old ridge here where the mill is picking it up. It's back for the most part. It looks decent. However, I made a mistake here. This is the smallest port. This had been my most aggressive 45 by accident. I grabbed the wrong cutter and now it's a 50 degree valve job. So uh, this one won't give us a true test. Um, but I did flow it with the 45, but its top cut was mostly gone. So this one's probably just going to be like more for fun and just show us something, but it's not a comparison. These two are. So anyway, uh, I got to blend these out and then pop them back on the flow bench, see what happens. Okay, the valve job's all blended out. Probably not the best, but it's kind of late and I'm just trying to get it done. Uh, you can see it's gone there, the ridge there. Ridge around here, ridge there is gone. This one too. So, I failed something there. Should have done a better job. Um, this one's good. But honestly, this is the port I like the best, the small one. This big one's kind of cool. This one's a stock one, so I'm fixing the flow it, then make the throat too large, and see what happens with that too. Then I think we'll be done. Anyway, let me get this on the bench and let's see what this thing did. 
Okay, this is what you've been waiting for, the results. And I'll go through it all as best as I can. So we'll start off with this one is my 50 degree port. Remember there are four ports. 50 degree, the smallest one, which ends up being a 50 degree. And then the one that was like stock. And then the 55 degree, which is supposed to be the highest flowing one. Let's go through them. Here we have, we're gonna see if the angle mill did anything. This one's angle, this is the 50 degree. This is on a 4155 board. I'll show you a 430 in a second. This is angle milled and this one is not. If you look, it's gained in the lower left areas. It pretty much gained everywhere, except for at two tenths. So it gained everywhere in the left point, having an angle milled, everywhere. Now that's a three degree change. Let's see what it did on a 430 board. These aren't right. If you look here, it's worse. Like the difference is this on a 430 bore standing in his bench though. Um, down, down, down. And then right here about 400, it starts making the switch. You could tell it's lost and then it starts to gain and you could tell it gains the rest of the way. So it's showing that the angle mill definitely is helping on the um, higher left points pretty much from 400 on, at least on this port. Now, I also did side mill this head and I flowed this one because if you looked at it, I ground more from this side than this side. So I was thinking, well, it took less of the um, top cut, cut away. So this one should give me a good representation of what's actually happened, what, it, what the side mill actually did. And here's the results. So that's just angle mill. This is side mill. It lost. In all fairness, this was only moved. And I, I thought it would move a bunch. It didn't. 50 thousandths or 53 actually thousandths um, side mill ended up being um, two tenths of one degree. So um, not much. And because of that, it really didn't help flow. This loss of flow is probably more to the fact that more of the top, I mean, you could tell I didn't redo it. The top cut's gone. So that's probably more what caused the loss of flow more than this side um, cut or side mill did. So really that was what you gained, you lost with the top cut being gone. So yeah. Now the next one's far more interesting. Let's go to the next port. The next port is this one, my little tiny guy, which by the way, is still my, it's actually my favorite one, period. You'll see why. So here's our results. Now this one's from the 4155 bore uh, Superflow. So this is not angle milled, this is angle milled. And you can see the results. This one's a little bit different than the other one. Cause if you tell, it lost a little there, gained quite a bit here. Gained a little bit there, lost, 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 gain, slight gain, and slight gain. So for the most part, this port, being probably because it's so small, had a smaller impact as far as the flow-wise on the 4155 bore. But check this out. Here is the 4030 bore, the much smaller bore. Boom. It did somewhat far different, probably because the bore was smaller, it's less, it's more shrouded compared to the 4155, so it becomes, the angle milling becomes a more of an influence. And you could tell, gain, slight loss, slight loss, slight loss, and then big gains. Look, it's doing 369 CFM um, on this little bitty port. That's, and that's great. But, I, you know, by accident, I uh, kind of messed up. And uh, this is after the side mill. And then I, by accident, I put the 50 degree valve job on. So kind of messed that up doing that. And I was trying to keep the valve job the same. So I thought, I made a mistake, point being. And I, I just made a mistake. But look what it did, it helped. This is the 50 degree versus the 45. Look at this, and this is still 430 board. Loss here, pretty good loss there. Loss there too, but then wham. Big gain, 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 and then slight gains through here. But now it's 373 C, uh, CFM through that little bitty port. It's pretty good, pretty good. But I've got one more thing to show you on this one. After I did that last test, I wanted to put it back on the bigger bore, this small one, to see it would make a difference. So here we have, this is still the angle milled one. This is side mill with a 50 degree valve job, 4155 bore. This is where the numbers really changed. This right here is my biggest one I was trying to get at, but you could tell the difference between side mill and 50 degree, 
So this is just angle milled 45 degrees, side mill and uh, 50 degree valve job, and look what it did. So it's like a pretty good loss there, loss there, and then a huge gain at a four. I mentioned that only because that's the highest number of any of the ports at four, and then the rest numbers are about the same. But you look at that, it's still almost 379 CFM on the big bore for that little bitty port. That's the reason why I like it the best. But anyway, there's that one. Well, what about this port? Now this one, if you might remember, is just that stock one. Um, you could use this one's how I normally would have ported it. Here we have its results. So this one, I only did it on the 430 bore, and here's what you get. From the angle mill, it's a similar trend. Um, you could tell what's happened. It loses a little down low, and then it starts gaining up top. And that's what it did. Very similar to what all the other ports have done on the 430 bore. They'll lose it a little bit at the beginning, gain it at the top. One to go, the most exciting one, the big one. All right, here we go with its numbers. So, first one, this is the 4155 bore. I'm going to see what the angle mill does. Here's where it was before. This is what the angle mill, and these are the differences. It pretty much gained everywhere except for right here. It lost 12 CFM, which is a huge loss, but then it made a whole bunch of it up right there. And then it gained the gain. So, big difference there having it uh, angle milled. Definitely helped it more spots. All right, what about on the 430 bore, though? Here's what it did on the 430. So here we have, um, not angle milled, angle milled. As you could tell, looking at the numbers, it lost there, lost there, same, same, big gain, big gain, big gain, and again. As you could tell, you can pretty much see a trend going on for sure now on the 430 bore. When you angle mill, you're gonna usually lose two, three, four, maybe not a big amount, and then gain a whole bunch here. That's what so far all four ports have showed. Now, I did flow this one with this um, side mill, just because I was curious to see what happened. And this is where the numbers are gonna get a little weird, so bear with me. Okay, this might be look a little confusing, so bear with me as I do this one. This one right here is angle milled, this is side milled, and this is the difference. As you could tell, the side mill really didn't gain anywhere except for right here at nine and one. It was really a letdown. And I'm gonna explain what I did next to explain where these numbers came from and why I think it. This was after doing the valve job. Now the valve job had something, it wasn't that the valve job was bad, but what you have happening is when I sink it down, the throat itself moves down that kind of mess up what things are. But here's something else that I didn't think about. And this is the reason why I tested on the third test. I'm gonna grab a couple of valves real quick. This is the exhaust valve that I've been flowing with. All the tests have been done with the same one. And this is the intake valve for this port. You see the problem? Because this valve drop keeps getting dropped down, it's sitting so much lower in the exhaust. So what I thought was happening was the air is coming up because it's coming off the seat and splashing right into the exhaust valve because this has been sunk down. This is the same height that was that we began with. So I thought as it's opening, it's hitting this. So what I wanted to try is I put this exhaust valve in. Now this is one I use just to do chambers. It has no margin, but it sits lower, hopefully reduced the amount of restriction. And that's where this one came from. The only thing I did was change the exhaust valve and gain a little up. Well, I should, you can ignore these differences because that's comparing to number five. Really, we just need to look at number seven and six. Uh, about the same, slight gain, same, slight gain, same, slight, same, same, about the same. Point being is that exhaust valve didn't change a thing. So you might say, well, what do you think caused it? Really, I think it's still sitting too low. And yeah, the exhaust might be out of the way, but still hitting that entire ridge of the chamber and stuff. There's probably more going down, especially because when you redo the valve job and you sink it down, the throat location changes and it really kind of messes things up. The other thing to think about is too, is when I milled the head or side milled it, I tilted it this way, right? Well, that means the whole port turned too. And so maybe if the port was straight, but the valve itself was turned, it wouldn't have been had the same issue. So that may be some of it too. So maybe the side mill didn't show up because I didn't just move the valve, I moved the whole entire port. So I don't know, something to play with. But anyway, this head is now done. I am, the only thing I have left to do on this one is I'm going to 
do another video probably on Sunday about making the throat too large. As I said, what to not do when porting. I'm going to give the actual evidence. I'm going to make the, the throat way too large. And maybe that'll be a video on Sunday. I might actually use the burr finish. But other than that, this head's done. I'm done with it. So if you think, man, I, I wouldn't mind having that uh, head. That looks like something horrible I would never use. Um, and you want to get a part of this. It's $5 for an entry. That's how I'm doing it. Five bucks get you an entry. And then on December 11th, I think I'll call it quits then. I'm going to draw out a name out of the ones that entered in. Uh, you get the head for, for that. So you can enter more than once. It's up to you. I don't care. You might be saying, why? It seems like you're just trying to get more money. Uh, true, because I need to buy more heads to test for these. For instance, tomorrow I'm going to call Brzezinski's and order the Hemi plate to do the the Hemi, the Gen 3 Hemi's. Uh, here's how much it costs. The plate's 440 The bore for it, I think, is 300 because you have some extra 100 bucks for this fee to make it a 4.1 bore. Um, it's not cheap. And I'll go ahead and tell you, for those that don't have any flow benches and you think we make money, uh, we make money on the port work and you need the flow bench to do it, but individual port jobs or just flowing heads, I should say, individual flowing of heads never pays for itself. You can never pay for the bench or any of the other pieces. So, anyway... Regardless, I really am trying to get another test head. And some of you have put several suggestions. Um, some of you wanted the, probably the one most asked for has been the cheaper Chinese small block Chevy heads, which I may do. Um, my only thing with that is we've been on the LS Chevys forever. Maybe another family would be a good idea or a big block or something else a little different. But uh, that, that's where it's at. Uh, thanks for sticking around for this long. I know this video was longer, but there's a lot of information. You probably need to go back and rewind and watch parts and freeze it to see the numbers, but there you go. Um, if you want an entry, entry in this, it's just winegunnerracing at gmail.com. Email me. I'll send you an invoice for all the five bucks and your name is entered into this. And December 11th will be the cutoff date, and then this thing's out the door. Watch for this one more time as I mess up the throat on this, and it is done. By the way, since we're all finished, my favorite port is the little one. So thanks for sticking around, and uh, catch you later.